So preseason is still rolling along and we are about, what, 11 days away from the NBA regular season opener and I wanted to talk really quickly about the Golden State Warriors because they're one of the teams that, you know, I've been watching this preseason as I try to catch up on preseason games. And I wanted to talk about the Chris Paul edition because I made a video back in the summer about Chris Paul making the Warriors a better team and through two preseason games, the games in which Chris Paul played, which was against the Lakers each time, they didn't play their regular starters yesterday against the Kings or they didn't play uh, Chris Paul and Steph Curry against the Kings. But I wanted to talk about the addition of Chris Paul because it seems like Chris Paul is fitting in really quickly, or at least he understands what the Warriors like to do, how they operate, and because Chris Paul is such a high IQ player, he is fitting in seamlessly. And there are some possessions where I'm like, oh, there are some things where the Warriors have to also adjust to Chris Paul that will also benefit them. And more so, I've mentioned this before in a rant and you know, I've mentioned it in a previous video, but I just don't understand why people who watch basketball talk about basketball continue to underestimate the Warriors or not even underestimate the Warriors, but just leave them out of the contender tier because I've seen some tier lists and they don't have the Warriors as a tier one team and I just don't understand it. I don't understand how a core that has won four championships as most recently as 2022 isn't considered a contender. When I made my DeAndre Ayton can be an X factor for the Suns video a few weeks ago, I had briefly put up a screenshot of my Western Conference tier list from a previous video when I did West tiers. And I have the Warriors in the contender tier and just below I have the Suns on the knocking on the door tier, meaning I needed to see a few questions answered. I needed to see the team gel with nine new players and a coaching staff before I can envision in my head that the Suns could outright win the title in their first full year together. And Phoenix fans got a little snarky. Some of them did in the comments. I'm not going to sit here and say all of them did. One of them got really weird and started going on all my videos talking a bunch of shit. So I blocked him immediately. But there are just some snarky comments not understanding why the Warriors are considered contenders, but the Suns weren't. And if you have the Suns there, I mean, I don't blame you. I just need to see it a little bit first. But God forbid that a core that, by the way, has a player that is one of the three players in the NBA that has a case as the best player in the world is on that core, along with one of the best defensive players of all time, still playing at a high level, and one of the best three-point shooters ever, and one of the best third options ever in Klay Thompson on the team, the highest winning trio percent winning percentage-wise in the playoffs in NBA history. They just cannot understand for some reason that if you make the dance, if you make the playoff dance, and you have that core, you have a chance. It's like with the Lakers. If you make the playoffs and you have LeBron and Anthony Davis, you have a shot. Case in point, when they made their run to the Western Conference Finals last year. Case in point, when the Warriors made the 2022 playoffs and they made a run to the finals. They just get the benefit of the doubt. And now I'm thinking that this core has added one of the greatest minds greatest point guards of all time, somebody who is still a positive impact player in the NBA in Chris Paul. Now I know Chris Paul, his time in Phoenix was running low. You know, I'm not so sure that if you're a contending team, if Chris Paul at this point in his career being your second option or your second best player means that you're going to win a title. But Chris Paul is still an impact player and now he is in a not reduced role, but he has a bunch of really good players that could take the load off of him and more so what I've noticed is that Chris Paul is fitting in seamlessly and there are some possessions in these preseason games that Chris Paul has played with Steph and Clay. Draymond's out right now with the ankle injury but there are some possessions where the Warriors have to get used to Chris Paul because Chris Paul is one of the smartest players ever and you could tell in these preseason games he is just gonna have a lot of fun playing with these guys. The off-ball movement, the screening, the dribble handoffs, the multiple actions. Chris Paul has picked up on that stuff quickly. 
And who knows if Chris Paul is going to start when Draymond comes back. I think it's pretty simple. I think Chris Paul should come off the bench. But the Warriors have two high-level facilitators now instead of just one in Draymond. And Steph is a good passer in his own right. But we all know the Warriors, they like to run their split actions, DHOs with Draymond, Draymond finding guys on backdoor cuts. But now the Warriors have one of the best passers of all time, one of the smartest passers of all time in Chris Paul, and someone who can bring some organization to the Warriors' organized chaos. Someone who, you know... If the Warriors are cleaning up a library or something like that, and they get most of the books on the bookshelf, Chris Paul is the guy who comes in at the back end of the shift and is like, oh, there's still quite a few books on the floor. Here, let me pick these up real quick and put them on the bookshelf. Terrible analogy, but I hope you can get where I'm coming from. Chris Paul has one of the best assist to turnover ratios in NBA history. And for a team like the Warriors who, you know, can throw the ball around the gym a little bit, Chris Paul bringing organization to that team definitely helps. Steph and Clay running off ball while Chris Paul is just dissecting a defense. And not only that, there are just some passes in these preseason games where Chris Paul is throwing somebody open, putting the ball right on the money in the shooter pocket. He's going to have a blast playing with these guys. There is one possession in the first Laker preseason game where where the Warriors are pushing it down. Chris Paul gets the pass in the corner and Clay cuts. But as Clay is cutting, he has his head turned back to Chris Paul. He doesn't see Chris Paul. But Chris Paul sees that Clay is cutting and knows he's going to be open. So Chris Paul throws it a little bit earlier, probably than what people were expecting. And Clay barely turned his head, caught the ball and was kind of in a no man's land like oh I didn't expect to get the pass here but I'm right here near the basket let me rise up and try to shoot and Clay missed it and the Warriors were a little out of sync there but that's an example of how Chris Paul is picking up on what the Warriors like to do and his teammates not expecting probably not expecting Chris Paul to pick up on it that quickly and there's another example of it where it turns into something good, where Steph even acknowledged it mid-shot, but in that second Lakers preseason game, Steph gets the ball, he's going to the basket, and then he, you know, realizes he's walled off and then twirls around and throws it back out at the top of the key to Chris Paul. And Chris Paul knows immediately that Steph is going to try and relocate. Chris Paul threw the ball as Steph was coming to the three-point line to relocate, and Steph caught it right in the pocket, shot it, and then didn't even look at the basket as Steph Curry usually does because he's a great shooter, looks at Chris Paul and points at him as if to say, yes, that's how we do it. That is how we do it. Think about how many players have come through the warrior system during the Steve Kerr era, whether it was D'Angelo Russell or a few others, and it doesn't take them quite as fast to pick up on how the Warriors play. Chris Paul picks up on it immediately. And not only that, Chris Paul has always been a good catch and shoot three point shooter. So when Warriors run off ball action or splits with Draymond, Chris Paul can chill in the corner and space the floor. And because there's so much spacing in these actions now for Chris Paul, he has time to load up and shoot. Kavon Looney, one of the best screeners. Draymond Green, one of the best screeners, can screen for Chris Paul and get him into his mid-range game or dissect the defense, which, by the way, probably has a bunch of stuff going on around him in that pick and roll so he can pick apart a defense. This, I really think this Chris Paul trade is going to be a boon for the Warriors. Definitely an upgrade over Jordan Poole in a lot of senses. And not just because, you know, Jordan Poole is young and talented and definitely helped on that Warriors title run. But Chris Paul just has 19 years of experience. He does the little stuff well. He's still a better defender than Jordan Poole. That's not even a debate. And Chris Paul just does all the winning stuff a little bit better. Also, Chris Paul is a willing screener. We'll see as the season goes on, but Chris Paul, you know, still is a pest on the block if someone someone bigger tries to post him up. But Chris Paul just brings a lot to this Warriors team. And if he comes off the bench, that bench is going to be so organized. When Draymond and Steph are off the floor, Chris Paul will finally, you know, be the answer kind of to what happens when both those guys are off the floor because Chris Paul can organize in a way that will just get them efficient points every time 
And if you look at it, a team that won the 2022 title that had a dominant starting five net rating wise in the regular season that year and the reg and the playoffs during that title run that same starting five of Wiggins Clay Steph Draymond and Looney dominated again in the regular season and had a great net rating in the playoffs that starting five is back Chris Paul is back that's a damn good top six to have you have Gary Payton the second who was also instrumental and a really good defender and just somebody who is a basically a pick and rolling big guard that's athletic and then I really think this is my other second Warriors take but it'll be malpractice if Steve Kerr doesn't have Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga in the rotation because I haven't really been concerned about there's been concern about that the Warriors have enough add enough size and add enough wing defense the answers are right there with Kaminga and Moses Moody and have been they should have played last year because the only way you can get development is playing reps in real games and for whatever reason Steve Kerr just didn't give Moses Moody and Kaminga consistent minutes during the regular season or not as much as I thought they should have gotten but they're a year older. Kaminga looks great in the preseason. That is like the one guy that will give the Warriors some versati some major versatility with his athleticism. He could play the three and the four, maybe even small ball five. Now that he's going to play with Chris Paul, that should help. A lot of people have mentioned that. But I also like the Dario Saric pickup. That's another high IQ player, versatile four, five type of guy that can also pass and shoot. I really like this Warriors team, man. And the fact that they don't have the punch looming over them anymore, that's kind of gone now. Trading away Jordan Poole, that whole thing's gone. This team can solely focus on winning a championship, which is what most championship teams, that's all they want to do is focus solely on that. The goal of rowing the same boat together to reach that goal of winning a championship with no distractions and the Warriors have that and they upgraded with that Jordan Poole trade getting Chris Paul and I really can't wait to see how Chris Paul further integrates himself into this Warriors team because he's doing it seamlessly and his teammates are getting used to him too and it's just going to be a great pairing I think.